الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة All praise is due to Allah We praise him We seek his aid and we ask for his forgiveness We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of ourselves and the evil consequences of our actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can lead astray, and whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray, none can guide. I testify that there is none worthy of our worship and devotion but the Almighty Allah alone. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. O you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared and die not, except as Muslims. O mankind, be dutiful to your Lord who created you from a single person and from him he created his wife. And from them both he created many men and women. And fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights and observe the rights of your kin. Surely Allah is ever and all watcher over you. O you who believe, keep your duty to Allah. Fear him and speak the truth. He will direct you to righteous deeds and will forgive your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has indeed attained a great achievement. The best words are the words of Allah. And the best guidance is that of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And the worst things in the religion are the newly invented matters. For all the newly invented matters in religion are innovation and every innova- innovation is bid'ah and misguidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran about Isa ibn Maryam. That he says to Bani Israel, وَجَعَلَنِي مُبَارَكًا أَيْنَمَا كُنْتْ And Allah made me Mubarak. Allah made me blessed and a source of blessing wherever I may be. And that's a description of the believer. And what it means as the scholars of tafsir commented on this verse is that Allah made me a source of good. Allah made me a person who engages in good and spreads good wherever I may be. And that's how the believer should be. That's how every believer should be. This is the advice of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this statement captures the heart of the religion of Al-Islam.
لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. Brothers and sisters, the khutbah has sanctity. The khutbah has sanctity. I don't stipulate it. It's not my it's not my ideas. The khutbah in Islam has a high place, regardless of who gives the khutbah. Sanctity, it's not about me. It's about the khutbah. Allah made it sanctified. And it's Allah's right that we respect the khutbah. It's Allah's right that we respect the khutbah. It's from Sha'airullah. This is from the legislations and the signs of Islam that Allah established for us. And Allah says, ذَلِكَ وَمَن يُعَظِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ those who glorify and those who observe the rituals that Allah set for us, this is a sign, a good sign about the heart. And the Prophet ﷺ warned us against even speaking in the khutbah or engaging in anything during the khutbah, whether you like what is being said or you don't like it. Whether the speaker or the khatib appeals to you or not. So when we come into the masjid, you either turn your phone off or you put it on silent. We don't bring the voice of shaitan and the singing of shaitan into the house of Allah. The house of Allah has sanctity and we are supposed to observe it. The khutbah has rights. These are the rights of Allah. They're not my rights. They are the rights of Allah and we ought to observe it. So when we enter the masjid, make sure that your phone is on silent or turned off completely. And I will take this opportunity as well. Because many times in the khutbah, people will be checking their social media or they'll be surfing the web. And this is forbidden in the khutbah. It's forbidden. There are people who play games in the khutbah on their phone. Why did you come here then? Why did you come here? The Prophet ﷺ says, Man lagha fala lah. Whoever engages in anything other than the khutbah, then he has no jum'ah. There is no reward. So if someone, why do we come here? We come here in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We come here seeking Allah's reward then we waste this reward and we violate Allah's rights just to check our messages or our social media or play some games. Things have right and we have to observe the right. So please keep this in mind. Jazakumullahu khayran. So the believer is someone who is supposed to have a positive and blessed presence wherever they may be. And the Prophet ﷺ captured this in the hadith where he advised Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu when he said, Ittaqillaha haythu ma kunt wa atbi'i sayyi'ata al-hasanata tamhuha wa khaliq al-nasa bi khuluq hasan Beautiful advice from the Prophet ﷺ and it's a lifestyle. This advice is a lifestyle. The Prophet ﷺ says, have taqwa towards Allah wherever you may be. In every place. When you're at home, when you're by yourself, have taqwa of Allah. Be mindful of Allah. Be respectful of Allah. Be fearful of, of Allah. Be dutiful to Allah. Observe Allah's rights. Know that He is with you wherever you are. And act accordingly. When you are with your spouse, observe their rights, treat them well. When you're with your children, when you're with your parents or your siblings, or when you are outside the house at work, you should be a man of honor and dignity and righteousness. Even if the environment around you is corrupted, you strive to be on the truth. You are supposed to be blessed wherever you may be. 
So be mindful of Allah wherever you may be. Be dutiful to Allah wherever you are. Be obedient to Allah. Be a servant of Allah, a true servant of Allah. Anywhere you may be. And if you fall in a sin, or if you slip, and we humans are bound to slip, all of us err, all of us fall in error. And the best among those who fall into error are the ones who repent. So when you follow up a sin or a slip with a good deed, it would wipe it. And that's what we want. Renew your commitment to goodness. Renew your commitment to obedience to Allah, to being a good presence in the world. And treat people, socialize with people with a good demeanor, with akhlaq. Good demeanor, the akhlaq of Islam, with morality, a high standard of morality, of justice, fairness, respect, generosity, kindness, wishing good for others. As an act of obedience to Allah, as an act of worship, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your, with your heart, with your attitude, with your demeanor. And since we're talking about this, the best example of this is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every incident of his life was a manifestation of being Mubarak wherever he was. And the good, the manifestation of this good is still available and present in our lives. Allah guided us through him. Allah guided us through his message. Allah guided us through his sacrifice that still continues until the day of judgment. So each one of us was supposed to be good wherever we may be. Sometimes we get excited and we start looking for opportunities to do good. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought good to your doorstep, wherever, wherever you may be, in any capacity that you find, any capacity that you find yourself in has opportunities for doing good. And the greatest good that you can do is to fulfill the obligations that Allah has upon you. This has priority over everything else. There's always this balance. What Allah loves the most are the obligations. That's what He loves the most. And what Allah hates the most and what angers Him the most is violation of the things or commit, committing something that he made prohibited. Before you go out of your way to do good and fix evil, you need to fulfill the obligations. You need to build that foundation. But if you leave what is an, ob what is an obligation and you commit what is a prohibition and then you want to do extra good, you have a serious problem with how you view the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why in the hadith, the divine hadith, the hadith al-Qudusi, Allah says, وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا افْتَرَضْتُ عَلَيْهِ My servant will never draw nearer to me, close to me, with anything better than what I made an obligation. What I, what I made binding on you, whether it's an obligation or a prohibition, that's where good starts. And once you fulfill this, you go out of your way to look for opportunities of extra good to do. This is the right order. So we have to be that type of Muslim. That's, what, that's the reality of a Muslim. That's the reality of a believer. That's what faith brings about. Faith and goodness are synonymous in many ways. They are the same. Islam and goodness are the same. Many people like to reduce Islam to certain rituals that they are comfortable with or they are happy with. But in other areas in the, of their life and of their behavior, you find that they display despicable kind of behavior. And that shows that there is a serious flaw in their understanding of Islam or even a serious flaw in their intentions. That they are doing things that are pleasing to them. That's it. They are obedient to their nafs, 
to their self and to their ego, they are not obedient to Allah. What decides what they do and what they engage in and what they observe is their personal preference, not the command of Allah. So they are a slave to themselves, not a slave to Allah. And we take an example here from the Muslim history, a beautiful example of a great character from Tabi'i Tabi'in. Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak, rahimahullah ta'ala. One of the great characters in the early generations, the Salaf of this Ummah. A great scholar, a great worshipper, and even a great businessman. He was a man that was born to a father from a Turkish origin, and his mother was from Khawarizm, which is now in the area between Turkmenistan, Kazakhstan, and Uzbekistan, to the north of Afghanistan today. He started seeking knowledge at the age of 20. And as he was studying, just to show you certain, we'll take certain glimpses from his life to show you the goodness of this man, how he's a manifestation, a manifestation of how to be Mubarak as a believer. That it's simple, that it's easy, but it's easy only for those who have good hearts. Allah made Islam easy for a good heart. This is where it starts. Many people want to be good outwardly, but they don't want to fix the diseases of their heart and they struggle. Doing what's good becomes hard for them. Why? Because they're not, not, they're not going about things the right way. If you don't fix your heart, doing what's good, fulfilling the obligations and staying away from prohibitions becomes very difficult. Why? Because of the discrepancy. Because of the contradiction between what's in your heart and your desired action outside. So many people say, I struggle with prayer. I struggle with dhikr. I struggle with a sin. I want to keep away from it, but I can't. What do I do? It starts with the heart. This is why the Prophet ﷺ told us, this is where Allah looks. Allah looks at your heart. And the Prophet ﷺ told us in another hadith that if the heart is sound, then everything else is sound. Because this is where it starts. That's the seed. All of your actions outside are a reflection of your heart. So start with the heart. It becomes easier. So Abdullah ibn Mubarak, as he was studying, he traveled to Yemen, to Egypt, to Asham. And as he was studying in Asham, and he finished his studies, in the later days he borrowed a pen. He didn't have a pen, so he borrowed a pen from someone. And he had in mind to return the pen to its owner. And he thought he did. Then he traveled to his city, which is Maru, today known as Merv. It's in Turkmenistan today. As when he gets very close to his home, hometown of Maru, he checks his luggage and he finds the pen that he had borrowed. He turns back, goes back to Asham. We're talking about Damascus. Thousands, probably hundreds or maybe thousands of, more than a thousand kilometers. He goes back to return the pen. And then he goes back to his hometown. That's his example. He starts doing business with one main goal. First, to protect his honor so he doesn't need anyone. And so that he doesn't, is not put under pressure by, you know, politicians who want to use sometimes the people of knowledge and the people of influence. So he wants to be independent. That's one reason for himself. The second reason, he said, I wanted to save the students of knowledge and the scholars from the need for anyone else. So he sponsored a countless number of students of knowledge and scholars. Even the son of Al-Fudayl ibn Iyad, Ali. Fudayl ibn Iyad, one of the greatest worshippers of our ummah. His son Ali asks Abdullah al-Mubarak, he said, you always tell us and talk to us about zuhud and about staying away from the dunya. But you have all this business. And he was a multi-millionaire. He was very, very, very rich. His business flourished. So he said, you always tell us about staying away from the dunya, but I see you doing all of this business, buying all these goods and selling them. 
He said, I'm doing this to protect my honor so I don't need any human being. So I don't have to compromise on my principles and my attitude. And number two, it's for the students of knowledge that I could save them. Wallahi, had it not been for them, I would never have engaged in any business. Thus, to sponsor them. And he was a very advanced scholar in terms of hadith. He would spend much of his time at home reading and studying to the point that some of his companions and friends, they said, you pray with us, then you leave. You don't stay with us. You don't spend time with us. He said, why should I stay with you? I spend my time with the Prophet wasallam when I read his hadith at home. I spend my time with the Sahaba, the companions and the Tabi'een. Their company is better when I read about their life. It's better than spending my time with you and all you engage in is matters of this life and backbiting, talking about others. Why should I spend time with you? That's how he spent his time. And he was very generous. And he would perform Hajj every year. And then, so one year he would make Hajj and one year he would engage in the Muslim expeditions, military expeditions. And one day as he was going to Hajj, which was not his first Hajj, more of a voluntary Hajj, they stopped by a place and there was like a dump. They passed by it and they had one of, they used to carry their food, like they would carry the chickens and some of the, the, the food that they would eat. And a chicken died. So they threw it in the garbage. So as they were leaving, he noticed that a local woman picked up that dead chicken and took it home. He followed her and he knocked on the door and he said, I saw that you took dead chicken. You know, it's haram to eat caracas. She said, you know, we don't have food, so it's halal for us. We can eat, we can eat it because we, don't ha we haven't had food for a long time. So he turns to his assistant he used to manage his affairs in Hajj. And he said, how much do we have in terms of finances for Hajj? This is on the way to Hajj. He said, a, thou uh, a thousand dinars. He said, how much do we need to make it back to our hometown if we return from this spot? He said, 20 dinars. He said, okay, give the rest to her. Keep 20 with us. Helping those needy Muslims is better for us to make voluntary Hajj, which we made many years ago. Yeah, many times in the, in the past years. So he gave her the wealth and he said, no, fix your own affairs. And he went back to his home city. That's an example of being Mubarak. And subhanAllah, his name was Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from him and bless him. And may Allah allow us to be an example of this great generation, of these great personalities that followed the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiruh alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al mursaleen sayyidina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een wa ba'du abdullah ibn al-mubarak as he was he would go for Hajj as well from his hometown. And he created some sort of a framework where he would manage the Hajj for the people from his city. So he would take their finances and say, I would cover all of your needs throughout the Hajj. I will take care of all of that because I have some assistants and they can manage the details. You don't have to. So just give me the finances you have for Hajj. And many times there were, the finances were not sufficient. So he would take those and keep them. And keep them where? Keep them in Maru, in their home city. And he would sponsor them throughout Hajj and treat them very well. Give them a luxury experience from his own pocket. Give them the best food, the best accommodation. And on the way back, he would buy gifts for their families from his own pocket. And they don't know, they're clueless. And then, before they arrive at their hometown, he would send one of his assistants to each house of his companions in order to refurbish the house, renovate it, beautify it, paint, give it a new paint, painting. 
And so that when they arrive, it's a pleasant experience, something fresh. And he would, once they arrive, he would give them the gifts that he bought for them. And then he would give each one of them the finances that he had given them before they set out. He would say, this is, here's your money. Your hajj was a gift for me. That's what he would do. So that's an example of someone. An example to be followed. And we all, you know, we don't have to be Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak. We don't have to be rich. You don't have to be special in any ways. Wherever Allah puts you, Allah puts so many opportunities. Wherever you find, you know, the responsibilities, start with the responsibilities that are upon you, the people around you. Start, you know, charity at home. It's not about the excitement of getting out of your way and doing charity. If charity is for Allah and if it comes from a good place, it starts at home and you would enjoy it. If it's not for some kind of psychological reasons and not for show off, it would make so much sense just to do good and not get any credit for it. That, that's a sign of sincerity. A sign of sincerity. So let's be a source of good and blessings wherever we may be. First in our private life, by being obedient to Allah and being true and honest with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fixing our own mistakes, addressing our own shortcomings, and then being good with our spouses, our children, our parents as well. Our, our, our youth are taught now to be cool is to be rebellious and defiant and disrespectful and to act in unethical ways. Don't succumb to that. Don't fall for that kind of foolishness. Don't fall for that. Be a man of dignity and a man of honor. Because honor and dignity are timeless. A timeless. Don't let this culture that is corrupted, don't let it eat at your heart. Don't let it destroy you. Be good. Be good to your parents. Be good to your siblings. Be good to other people. That kind of, you know, trying to be cool and being immoral and unethical and selfish. And it's all about how you look and it's all about show and it's all about looking different and looking trendy. Wallahi, you will regret it. You will regret it because it would destroy your life sometimes in ways that you can never fix afterwards. Don't fall for these trends. Wallahi, they are there to destroy you. Be Mubarak. Be a person of blessings. And Wallahi, you will reap the fruits in this life and in the next. Start with your, with your family around, with your friends, with your colleagues, with people around. Don't be, don't be a source of suffering for someone else. Don't be a source of suffering. Be a source of good. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide our hearts and to forgive our sins. Allahumma aghfir lil mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat al ahya minhum wal amwat. Allahumma aghfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. اللهم أبرم لهذه الأمة أمر رشد يعز فيه أهل طاعتك ويذل فيه أهل معصيتك ويعمل فيه بكتابك وسنة نبيك صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم كن للمستضعفين من المؤمنين في كل مكان اللهم ارحم ضعفهم واجبر كسرهم اللهم انصرهم على عدوك وعدوهم اللهم عليك بالظالمين اللهم عليك بالظالمين ومن عاونهم اللهم خذهم أخذ عزيز مقتدر اللهم كن لإخواننا المسلمين في غزة وفي فلسطين وفي السودان وفي الشام وفي جميع بلاد المسلمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين